All right, hello everyone. This is a module zero video. And so on the screen, you should see module zero in Canvas. And I'm gonna go in here and click on the module zero note packet. Note that there is a discussion board here. And then in here, you can see where you can download the packet and you can print it or you can work with it electronically. And then uh, there's a video here uh, for one of the unit conversions. And in the note packets in future modules, there'll, there'll be even more videos. All right, so let's see, let's take a look at the packet. Um, and it says, you know, what is physics? Physics is concerned with describing the interactions of blank, blank, what? So a lot of these blanks you're gonna fill in by using your textbook. So you can see here, that, that's your primary thing to go to. Um, and then the videos, and then, um, you know, they can use other sources as well. But I would really stick to starting with the textbook and then trying out other, other sources after that. Um, and then these, you know, these custom made videos for the course as well. So if we go to the textbook and we look in here, um, see, I think it's in section 1.1. So physics is concerned with describing the interactions of energy, matter, space, and time. And it is especially interested in what fundamental mechanisms underlie every phenomenon. So I think, yep, that is exactly what we needed to be able to fill that in. And so you, you can, uh, utilize that um, to help you fill in the blanks. And like I said, in this packet and future packets. All right. So, you know, well, what does that mean? What is physics? Physics is like why the world around us works the way it does. And it really is, it underlies all other science disciplines. And that, that includes chemistry. If you get down to looking at what's happening inside an atom, the uh, the attractions and repulsions among the, the protons and neutrons inside the nucleus, that's physics. And there's, there's just physics everywhere around us. And so, like I said, it's, it's the most basic level um, science that there is. I don't mean it's basic in the terms of being simple, but it's the base basis for everything else. And everything else is, is applied physics, whether you're talking about uh, things in the medical field, chemistry, biology, uh, engineering, all of those are building upon physics. And so by understand physics, uh, it allows us as a people to um, have GPS systems that get us where we need to go, keep track of where we are and where we want to go, um, electronics to, to make the circuits in our, in our cell phones work, um, just every imaginable thing that you love to, to utilize. Um, is, is based on a better and better understanding of physics over the years. All right, uh, so let's take a pause here and I am going to switch to my other camera. So just give me a moment as I switch this over. All right. Zoom in here. Get a nice view of my keyboard. <laughs> Move that out of the way. All right, and we will focus in on that. There we go. All right, so applications of physics. I'm going to let you read about that in your textbook. And then some more fill in the blank, and that's in section 1.2, so you'll know where to look for it. Standard units. So we're going to be using SI units. Uh, SI unit of length is the meter, which has the symbol M. And these three, you, you, you can look up the other two as well as uh, electrical current. I'll give you that one as the amp, but it's the MKS system. Okay, so that's what we're going to use. That's what SI is. And so SI is not the same as metric. And so you have to keep in mind, 
SI is more specific than metric because one of these two has a prefix, okay? One of the SI units has a prefix. And so that's what I want you to look up. All right. Now, unit conversions, that's one of the things in this module to get familiar with. And so there's things that we know to be true, such as one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters, but then we can utilize that to, to do conversions. For example, converting 2.14 centimeters into inches, we can say 2.14 centimeters is the same as 2.14 centimeters times one inch over 2.54 centimeters. And so the reason that we're allowed to multiply by this is because one inch is equivalent to 2.54 centimeters, okay? We can't do that unless those two things are equivalent. So when you're putting one thing over another, they have to be equivalent. And then what you wanna look for is that the units cancel. So we have centimeters in the numerator and in the denominator and that cancels, leaves us with units of inches. And then as it shows here, if you were to do it the other way around, 2.14 centimeters times 2.54 over one, well, these two things are equivalent, so it's okay to multiply by that, but it won't get you the answer in inches, which is what you want. It gives you the answer in centimeters squared per inch, which is a really, really strange unit of length um, and not what we were going for. So if you pay attention, you're like, oh no, that doesn't cancel. Otherwise, you just, you know, you don't wanna just be taking a 50-50 chance on it. You wanna actually write out the units. Show your work, okay? And then here is an example on page three where we have a unit raised to a power. And that, that comes up frequently, a unit squared. Uh, they, this is often associated with area or a unit cubed can be associated with volume. And so when you do that, um, you're basically multiplying by the conversion factor two or three times, in this case, three times. And the shorthand way was that it was written just with an exponent to the third power. But what you have to realize, you know, one cubed is one, that's fine. Meters cubed is fine, centimeters cubed, but then 100 cubed is not 100. So 100 cubed is 1 million, okay? So that's 10 to the sixth. It's just another way to write 1 million. So that's where that comes from. And like I said, you could have written 100 centimeters cubed, and then you could have written one over 100 centimeters one meter over 100 centimeters, one meter over 100 centimeters. So then centimeters cubed cancels with centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. And then it's more clear that it's 100 times 100 times 100, which is, like I said, 1 million. Okay, so those are a little bit harder. And one of the other videos um, for the student note packet um, shows you how to do one of, another one of those examples it is one of the ones actually right here, number seven. Okay, so to do these unit conversions, you start by writing out what was given, and then you can use parentheses or you can use this, this method of writing it out. So we need something that's gonna tell us the conversion between kilometers and miles. And I'm using MI for miles, so it doesn't get confused with meters, which is M. And so we look back here and there we go, one mile is 1.61 kilometers. And you can see, I already knew where the units needed to be for my conversion, but now I can put in what the values are, 1.61 kilometers, one mile, and I wrote out a long space. I actually didn't need that much space. And then I can see that, my, that this cancels, and I can get my calculator out. Two times, times one. I don't really need to do the times one, but, can divided by 1.61, and that equals one point. Now it says 1.24, For this course, what I want you to do is always write down three digits, okay? Not including zeros, like if it's 0 0.00053 something, don't include all those zeros that come to the beginning, but three digits, not three decimal places, but three digits. So 1.24, I see that one there in my answer bank, so I can go ahead and cross that one out. Okay, so that gives you an idea on how to do unit conversions. We can do another one, if you want that's a little more complicated, 60 miles per hour. Now one of, here's another trick, it says MPH, but I'm gonna write it as miles 
over hours. And this is going to make it a lot easier for me to do my unit conversion, I'm trying to get it to kilometers per hour. So I'm actually going to use the same uh, conversion that I used last time, which was one mile equals 1.61 kilometers. Okay, but it's inverted compared to how I used it last time. Miles cancels with miles, and that leaves me with kilometers in the top and hours in the bottom. And so then I can easily do this 60 times 1.61, 96.6 kilometers per hour. And then this one is similar, but you're going to convert the hours to seconds. So it's the same idea. Start the same by writing it out. Okay, and really horizontal lines are much better than diagonal lines when it comes to writing units and doing unit conversion. So, okay, and then you're going to fill in, we have hours and we want there to be seconds. I can even write that out here by units. I want there to be seconds in the denominator in the bottom. So I know seconds are going to be here. I don't want hours to show up. So I, I need to have hours in the numerator here so that those will cancel and seconds doesn't cancel, miles cancels. So then I have kilometers per sec. Oh, I was supposed to get meters per second. See, that's why we check. So I'm gonna need one more step here, which leaves me without enough room, but I'm gonna to have to say what one kilometer is some number of meters. So kilo means 10 to the third or 1000. So that's 1000 meters. Sorry, that's a little messy. So I'm going to let you fill in what an hour is in seconds, and then you can you can do all the calculations to get what the number is in meters per second. Okay, and then that one, there's a video for that, uh, but I encourage you for anyone where there's a video, try it on your own first. You're going to get a lot more out of it if you try it on your own. Even if you're not successful, you'll, you'll know um, whether you, whether you, have some room to improve or not, okay? Uh, for this last one, the answer is not in the answer bank, but you're gonna use Google by, by typing this in and seeing what it gives you, okay? And then what did you learn about unit conversions? Let you fill that in. There, there's a lot of things in here I'm not hitting in this video, but I do want you to, to fill in all the parts, read and, and read all of the note packet um, this one and future ones. All right, so there's a question here. You can look in your book. All right, so we're not going to focus on significant figure rules, but I do want you to keep three, it says, or more significant digits. Okay, that's what I was talking about on that prior problem back there. So which ones have exactly three significant figures? All right, so I told you before, the zeros at the beginning don't count. So this one, has one SF, so that one doesn't count. The zero doesn't count, and then one, two, three. Okay, and this one's tricky. The zero in the middle does count. Okay, so that one has three significant figures. So yes, 43.1, one, two, three, yes. 659, yes. This one's ambiguous. Um, but typically the, the zeros that go to the right don't count as significant. So I would, I would say that one is too, although it's a little ambiguous. And the way to get away from ambiguity is to write it in scientific notation, uh, which would be 1.23 times 10 to the sixth. Okay, And there's currently a little bit of lag or maybe a lot of lag in this um, video as far as the part where you're seeing my note packet. Oh, looks like I need to reconnect it. All right, and it doesn't want to reconnect, so. Hold on for just a second. There we go. Sorry about that. 
All right, the last part of this unit um, has to do with approximation. So you can read and, and answer these. Um, give you a hint on that one. Oh, that's not a hint. All right. And then here's just some useful things to uh, keep in mind. And, you know, like a meter and a yard are about the same, which is about three feet, which you can't see my hands if I'm holding them a meter apart. Um, that's good to know. Um, however fast something's going in miles per hour, the value in meters per second is about half of that. So in other words, 60 miles per hour, which is kind of a common speed to drive on the highway, cut it in half to get it into meters per second. That's a useful thing to know. If we're working in meters per second in a problem, you're like, how many miles per hour is that? You double it, you're like, oh, okay, I can visualize that. Okay, but if it's like, oh, we're calculating how fast an ant is moving and it comes out to be, I don't know, 12 meters per second, and you're like, hmm, is that realistic? And you're like, well, 12 doubled is 24. Could an ant be moving at 24 miles per hour? No, uh, that sounds ridiculous. So it gives you a chance to, uh, by approximating what it is in miles per hour, it gives you a chance to figure out whether it is a, a valid, like a, a reasonable answer. It doesn't tell you if it's right or wrong for sure, but it does help you rule out some unreasonable answers. Okay. So make sure you read these instructions here, including this part, as you do these scenarios. And so there's an example here so a boy drops a rock off of a building and then dot, 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 meaning in an actual problem, there would be more, um, there, there would be more information provided. So you're not able to actually do any calculations, but part of the problem was to find the height of the building and it came out to be 1,344 centimeters. All right, well, is that a reasonable height for a building? Well, 1,344 centimeters, times one meter over 100 centimeters is 13.44 meters. And then, like I said, a meter and a yard are about the same, which are both about three feet. So this is an approximate one meter, approximately three feet. 13 times three is about 39. Okay, I just dropped the 0.44. So we're talking about approximately 39 feet. Could, could a building be 39 feet tall? Yes, that's like approximately a four story building, about 10 feet per story. So that is a reasonable thing. And that's why yes is circled. Okay. And so in each of these, there's, there's information missing. So you're not able to do the calculation. That's not the point. It's to, to use some type of reasoning along with, you know, some calculations, even if they're just approximations to figure out if you're coming up with something some answer that's, you know, 10 or maybe a thousand times bigger than it should be or smaller than it should be, or if it's positive when it should be negative or things like that. And so there's definitely cases where you can come up with, um, you, you can figure out that something's unreasonable and then that allows you to go back and, and find your, your mistake. Okay, so I'm gonna let you work, out, work those out on your own. Um, this last page, it's the same for every, packet, every note packet in the whole course. And what it says is to write at least one question here. Okay. So at least one. So if you leave it blank, you're not going to get full credit because you didn't do at least one. Okay. This is a really valuable resource for you. And I encourage you to use it. Um, you ask a question here and I will answer it. Okay. I'll answer it to the best of my ability. Sometimes I have to do research. Um, but I will answer your questions here. But then for you to be able to see my feedback, you'll, you're gonna need to go into the document and look at the feedback. So if you go to the grade book and, and you click on, on the assignment and then you open it up and then you're, you're gonna be able to view the feedback. And I'll send some instructions through Canvas on how to do that. But you have to actually go inside the document to see the feedback that's on the document for these questions, but then all throughout the whole document. All right, well, that wraps up uh, my talk on module zero. Please uh, come to office hours or email me uh, or give me a call on my Google Voice number if you have any questions.
Okay, well, I will leave you with one parting thought. As I said, chemistry is, uh, has, has physics as a foundation. So I have my brand new t-shirt, never trust an atom. And then further down, it says, because they make up everything. You're welcome. All right, hope you got at least a tiny chuckle out of that. All right, y'all, have a great day.